Alex Bryjack. Thank you so much for tuning in to Mission Church. We're so glad that you're joining us here online, but we would love to see you right here at 82 Stratford Drive on a Sunday morning. We've got services at 9 a.m., 10.30, and 12 o'clock, and we've got programming for your kids and middle schoolers at all three services. So there is something for everyone in your family. Let's dive into today's message, but we'll see you soon at 82 Stratford Drive. Uh, if we haven't met, my name is John. Welcome to our amazing 11th year anniversary. We're blowing it out today. Uh, it's very exciting. I'm carrying a backpack, if you haven't noticed, and uh, it's real, and uh, it's really heavy. Um, very heavy. And so here's what I know. Every single Sunday, you guys walk into this place weighed down. You're not wearing one of these, I know, I know. But there's something heavy. Something weighing you down. And um, I'm just wondering, what's the weight right now? I'll go first, since I'm up here. I'll let you know the weight that's weighing me down. Uh, all right, this one, these are all for my fire pit. I'll put them back, honey. Um, <laughs> pain in people's lives, this one. As you might expect, being a pastor, it's one of the greatest joys ever. But we have, um, I guess, just more access to the amount of pain than probably mo most people. And this is, this is heavy. Uh, don't hear this as in like, oh, I shouldn't open up to our pastor. No, no, don't, don't hear that. I just need you to know, like, this is what I, I carry. Um, the pain of broken marriages, the pain of... College students that have walked away from the faith, just the pain in people's lives. This past week, the hurricane in Florida, have you, you heard about this? I mean, I got plenty of buddies that have places down there, and it's like pain. People losing lives in Florida. I mean, there, there is pain in people's lives, and, and I, I carry that into this place every Sunday, every day. Um, this represents Parenting. I've got two daughters, and one just became a teenager two weeks ago. <laughs> heavy! <laughs> this one's heavy. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Parents? And some of you are parents of grown children, and you've told me, like, it doesn't get lighter. Like, no, seriously, it doesn't. <sighs> um, I love my girls. Uh, you love your kids, whether they're little or grown, and, and it. It's heavy, right? The things that they're going through or the things that they're, whatever it might be. Got a couple more in here. Yeah, this one's big. Leadership. A lot of you lead a lot of different things. Could be a classroom, could be a company, could be a lot of different things. Um, this is heavy for me. And I love the privilege of leading, but it's heavy. It feels like what I'm supposed to lead is like, it's like, man, these are people's souls. You know what I mean? Like, it, can just, it can just be really heavy at times. Um, we're really grateful for this celebration. Uh, a couple years ago, I don't know if you remember, I only want to talk about it, but like, there was two years that were really, really heavy of leading. But every season over the last 11 years, man, it's just leadership. Um, this last one, Health challenges. Some people I love a whole lot. Can't figure it out. What is going on? Just any of you carry health challenges in here today? It's heavy. Super heavy. What do we do with the weight? Maybe it's the four things that I listed. Maybe yours are different. Could be a career change. You may have carried in here today the heaviness of a big choice. Do I go to that college? Do I stay home? What, what do I, do I ask her to marry me? <sighs> big choices. Maybe, maybe that's what you carried in today. Relational conflict. Maybe you carried that in today. Man, that is one of the heaviest things you could ever carry. Do I make the first step towards them? Do I... 
build a boundary. Like, what do, I, what do I do? And meanwhile, it's just heavy, but what do we do with this heaviness? What do we do with the weight of the burdens of life? The answer is we do what the greats of faith have done. We do what Mary did, the mother of Jesus. We do what the apostle Paul did while in prison. We, we do what King David did. We worship. What do we do with the weight? We worship. Worship is the way forward. It was the way forward for them. It's the way forward for us. We worship. Today begins a five-part series on the book of Psalms. Everyone say Psalms. Psalms. Yeah, some of you have been calling it Palms. It's like, bro, it's like, come on, man. (laughs) It's Psalms, all right? And I I grew up in a church. Uh, My dad was the pastor of our church, which explains a lot about me probably. Um, But the church I grew up in, I'm wondering if you grew up in this kind of church too, we had all of the songs that we would sing in in one book. I think, I, have a, I think we have a picture of a, of a hymnal. Do we got one of those? A hymnal? Maybe not. All right. Um, it, but any, anyone have a hymnal that you grew up? Okay, so I'm, I'm not, I'm, there it is. Okay. Um, I think it was that actual hymnal. I don't know. But me and Tommy, we grew up in the same church. There we'd be messing around. Didn't have any youth. You know, we'd have to be in there. And our parents, like, my dad from stage giving me the eye, like, I will kill you if you keep talking to Tommy. But that's what, during singing, we, we'd open it up, right? So all the songs we would do were all in one book. Well, that's one way for you to understand the largest book in your Bible named Psalms. It is a collection of songs. Now, they're not just any songs. These are sacred songs. What do we do with the weight of life? What do we do with the weight of the burdens that you and I carry around until Jesus returns or he takes us home? The answer is we worship, we sing. And in your Bible, the biggest book has the answer for what you and I do. We sing these sacred songs back to God. It may not change your circumstance, but it changes how you feel and interact in and amidst your situation and circumstances. This is what we're going to do for the next five weeks. The book of Psalms. Now, I've studied the book of Psalms. I've read it many, many times. I love Psalms. Uh, But this summer, my wife Kelly and I, we learned something about the book of Psalms that we never knew before. We were at this amazing family camp called Gull Lake up in Michigan, and we were on the waiting list, and we got in. It was amazing, and our girls were there. It was this family retreat where we got pastored for five days. It was awesome. It was amazing. I sat there like you're sitting there. We're just taking notes. We're just like, yes, we loved it. Uh, Dave Patty was the, uh, the speaker for the week. He's the founder of Josiah Venture. Uh, an incredible organization in Eastern Europe. And so we just sat in our Dave's teaching for those five days. He became a friend. And we were blown away by what we learned about the book of Psalms. And I want to teach you over the next five weeks what we learned over those five days. Now, what I didn't know about the book of Psalms is this. I knew it was a collection of songs, but I didn't know that almost all of the songs of Psalms fit within five kinds of songs. There's five genres within the book of Psalms. I never knew that. And so what we're going to help you understand is for whatever circumstance or situation you're going through, there is a song that you can learn to sing for that situation or circumstance. Uh, here, here's the five different genres uh, from the book of Psalms, and these are what we're going to learn. There's the song of lament. Everyone say lament. All right, you can screenshot this. I find this interesting, but there's 51 of those. Like the number one kind of song. In the book of Psalms is the song of lament. By the way, it's the one song I've never really known how to sing, so I don't. I just keep going. (laughs) Uh, We're going to learn how to sing that next Sunday. The song of wisdom, there's eight of those. The song of repentance, there's seven of those. The song of praise, that's the one that we typically think of when we think of Psalms. There's a bunch of those. There's 28 of those. Today, we're going to talk about the song of sovereignty. The song of sovereignty. Everyone say sovereignty. Sovereignty, the song of sovereignty. There's 15 of those. We're going to zero in on just one of those 15. You can learn how to sing these songs. Uh, This is a series to equip you on the heavy things in life. What do we do when we feel completely weighed down? Answer is we learn how to worship. We do what the ancients did. We sing. And today we're going to learn how to sing the song of sovereignty, the song of sovereignty. I got a couple great quotes for you, R.C. Sproul and Charles Spurgeon. This is what they said about sovereignty. 
R.C. Sproul says, those who understand God's sovereignty have joy even in the midst of suffering. A joy reflected in their very faces for they see that their suffering is not without purpose. Is there purpose in your pain? Sovereignty says yes, there is. Charles Spurgeon said it this way, there's no attribute more comforting to his children than that of God's sovereignty. And so in the next 25 to 30 minutes, I'm going to explain to you what sovereignty means. We'll get there in just about 10 minutes. The Song of Sovereignty, uh, this is the one that went triple platinum. It's Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Can't, I mean, you can't find it anywhere. Can't even find it. Triple platinum. Psalm 46. Um, if you have a Bible, you can open up to Psalm 46, and you're welcome for doing a series on the biggest book in the Bible. This one's easy to find. Like other books we study, you're like, I, can't, I don't know, give up, can't find it. You version. I'll pull it up on the screen as well. But just like any song, like any song, um, this one, the Song of Sovereignty, has four verses, okay? So, you know, a lot of songs will have a chorus and a bridge. We're not doing any choruses or bridges today, just verses, all right, so there's verse one of the song, verse two, verse three, and four. Does that make sense? Give me a head nod. Stay with me, all right? This is important, okay? So we're gonna walk through the four verses of this song of sovereignty. Why are we doing this? It's to equip you so you'll sing it when things are heavy, when things are overwhelming. Here's verse one. I run to you for refuge. This is how the song of sovereignty begins, verse one. I run to you for refuge. I was thinking about putting this to a melody, but I'm not going to embarrass myself. Um, maybe you can do that. Let me know if you like literally like put some tunes to this. I run to you for refuge. Say that with me. I run to you for refuge. This is how the song of sovereignty begins. This is verse one. Uh, listen to God's word. God is our refuge. God is our refuge. Say this with me. God is our refuge. He is. He's our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Put that one to memory years ago. He is. Isn't this amazing, this incredible theological truth that God is sovereign? It begins that God is also very personal. He's proximate. He's with us. A very present help in trouble, meaning that when things are heavy, God isn't down the street watching you wallow in your heaviness. No, he runs to us. He's with us. When we're weighed down, when we're overwhelmed, when we're not sure to do, like, what do we do with this? God says, I'm here. I'm with you. I am your very present help in this trouble. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Verse 11 repeats it. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Refuge, I love this word. I love this truth. Over 40 times in the book of Psalms, we see this word occur, refuge. It's a big theme. Take refuge in him. The Lord is his refuge. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Be a rock of refuge for me. I love Psalm 34, verse 8 from the message. It says this way, blessed are you who run to him. You run to him. It begs the question, what refuge are you running to these days? When it comes to worship, every one of you is a worshiper. There's plenty of you in here today that are kicking the tires on who Jesus is and you're exploring Christianity. I'm so glad you came. I really am. And um, whether you're a follower of Jesus or not, you are a worshiper. <laughs> like no one had to teach you this. Ever since you've been little, ever since there was like an, an ability for you to ascribe value and worth to something, you've been doing that. We're all worshipers. It's not a Christian thing. That's a human thing. Now, who you're worshiping and what you're worshiping, this is kind of when we're like, okay, now that is a believer. That's a follower of Jesus. They ascribe ultimate value and worth to the king of kings. Okay? The same is true for refuge. Every single one of us today runs to a refuge. When things are heavy, your refuge might be numbing out. You run to a substance. You're like, just a couple drinks. Okay, just two more, right? This is just, it's a pattern. That's your refuge. It is. Uh, for a lot of folks, it's busyness. When things are super heavy, when we're not sure what to do with the, the weighty things of life, we stay busy. No? I'm the only one. Okay, good, good. I figured, I figured I was the only one. We just stay busy. No idle time, no time to actually feel 
numb out, stay busy. Um, we run to the gym, and I'm a fan of training. I train all the time. But has it become your refuge? I mean, is that the place? Is that where you are running when things are heavy? The Song of Sovereignty says, no, 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 we gotta start here. God, he's our refuge. God is our refuge. I run to you for refuge. Um, a lot of you folks are new, and so let me tell you a little bit about my life. I'm the youngest of three boys. I'm the baby. And my dad was you know, a pastor growing up. We're from an athletic family. So we're super competitive. We got that from my mom. And... <laughs> No, I think they both are. I don't know. But we, as boys, broke everything in my mom's house. Every, everything. And so my dad and mom were always trying to come up with, like, what do we do to, like, keep them occupied? Like, what do we do? And so dad came up with this idea uh, one year. He's like, honey, I'm going to get him a ping pong table. So we're like, sweet. So he came home with a ping pong table, and it was, it was amazing. And so we started playing ping pong. We got pretty good at it. Now, my oldest brother, Jason, he's seven years older than me. My middle brother, Justin, we call him Jut, he's only three years older than me. So what my oldest brother would do is he would create all kinds of competitions for me and my middle brother, and he would just watch and laugh. <laughs> so we were playing ping pong, me and my middle brother, and the game is heated and uh, it's going down to the wire, and he's pretty good, and I'm getting pretty good, and I end up winning. I can't remember if it was a forehand smash. It may have been. I could have gone here, too. I don't know. I don't remember. It's a long time ago. But I won. And so I'm celebrating like this. Like, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, I won. Justin, my middle brother, crow hops and throws the paddle. Now, we were both quarterbacks, too. He throws the paddle as hard as he can and hits me in the chest. I thought I'd get a little more empathy, but that's all right. I'll keep moving. <laughs> he hits me in the chest. I mean, bam! And then he starts charging towards me. Now, I know this isn't to congratulate me. <laughs> but I also know that he doesn't have a paddle, but I do. <laughs> as he gets near me, I take my paddle and I turn it sideways, and I hit him in the head. Is hard. No, 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 judge me if you want. This is self-defense. I feel your judgment. This is self-defense. So I hit him as hard as I can, and I lay him out. You can ask him. He's not, he is knocked out. Rub the rubber leg and all. I mean, he's out. I'm standing over him, and then I'm like, oh, no. Because when he wakes up, he is seriously going to kill me. So here's what I did. Uh, the church owned our house. It's called a parsonage. So we, we like lived in the parking lot pretty much, okay? It was sweet because we could use the gym all the time. But anyway, so we were right there just like, so I'm like, dad is only a 30-second sprint away. And so as I'm standing over Judd realizing he's going to kill me, I jump up, I run out, and I sprint to my dad's office. And I would do this. I'd open my dad's office. It didn't matter what dad was doing. I barged in, and I just sat there on the couch. Hey, dad, how we doing? How's the day going? Good. <laughs> You good? A sermon prep? Um, son, can I help you? Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's great. Everything's great. This is what I think of when I think of refuge. Like, I knew if I could just get to his office. And it wasn't just that it was his office. It was who was in the office. It was my dad. And even though I was in the wrong, I just knew he would stand between us and he would protect me. I ran to my place of refuge. Where are you running? Where am I running to these days? Man, are we vulnerable when things are heavy? Man, am I vulnerable when I'm so weighed down and I do not have answers yet? I feel like I'm supposed to. Where am I running? Are we running to the Father? He is my refuge. We need to run to him. I run to you for refuge. This is verse one. It continues on, Psalm 46. Therefore, we will not fear Man, do I get afraid? Do we get afraid in the midst of heavy things we're carrying? We will not fear. Though the earth gives way, check this out. This psalm, verse 46, goes on to play out and talk about worst case scenarios. And I think that's actually really helpful. He doesn't go like, eh, if we have a bad day. No, nope. earth gives way. That's, that's like worst case scenario. Have you been in an earthquake before? You're like, uh, oh my gosh. 
Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, like everything is falling apart. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. I run to you for refuge, verse 2, is I call to you for rescue. I call to you for rescue. How do we sing this song of sovereignty? How do we learn it? How do we choose to sing it when things are heavy? Well, verse 1, I run to you for refuge. Verse 2, I call to you for rescue. I call to you for rescue. I will not fear. Even worst case scenarios, even when the things play out worse than we imagined, I will not fear. You're sovereign. I will call to you for rescue. Psalm 34, verse 4, I sought the Lord and he answers me and rescued me from all my fears. A show of hands, how many of you are afraid of heights in here? Yeah, it's usually, usually a number of you guys. And so you're not going to enjoy the next couple of minutes. I want to talk about some heights just for a second. Um, every year I, I take my daughters to Camp Paradise. It's uh, a ministry that was started by Willow Creek, the church I worked at before here, a great church. And they started Camp Paradise, what, 40-something years ago maybe? So it's a father-daughter or father-son camp. If you are a dad of kids ages, ages 8 to 12, talk to me. You need to go to camp with us next year. It took like 60 dads this past summer. Um, so uh, I've been taking my girls to camp. And they have all these different uh, things at camp that create environments of fear. And then in that moment, you can parent or almost be parented by your child in that moment because you're afraid. <laughs> so one of the, the things they have is, is the high ropes challenge. And, and I have some pictures. Tommy and I, we, um, we, we went up there with, with our kids. This, this is Tommy's daughter. And this balance beam is 50 feet in the air. I'm not, it is so high. It is so high. And here she is on the balance beam, all right, which is pretty cool. Um, Hannah, she's done this before, so she got even a little bit, a little bit more courageous. She's on the balance beam with a blindfold on. Now, it was a year before, we did the same exact thing, and Hannah's like, Dad, I, you know, I, th I think you're ready to, to do the blindfold. I'm like, I don't want to show off. <laughs> this isn't about me. This isn't about me. No, 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 Dad, I, I think, I think you, should, you should do the blindfold. And so uh, I tried the blindfold, and I just wanted to show you how, how it ended for me. And I'm, I'm glad my face is covered in this moment. So, yeah, and I, I ended up, so I hit my shin first. Yeah, right? Can you imagine? And, and then, yeah, and so I, I have the scar for it still on my shin. Now, here's why I'm bringing this up. If you've ever done a high ropes or rock climbing, rappelling, I've done that too. You put this harness on, but in this high ropes thing, what's amazing is this harness is then linked up to this cable thing. And they tell you before you start, like, listen, like this thing will hold like, you know, two tons or something like that. So the, the point is helping me. When I think of rescue, it's this. The sovereignty of God is what we are linking, hooking our very lives to. We will not fear moments where you feel like you're blindfolded, walking 50 feet up in the air on this balance beam. We will not fear. Why? We're hooked into the sovereignty of God. Like, we're just hooked in. Does that mean we won't fall? Oh, no, you can fall. Does that mean you may not get scarred up? No, no, there are scars. Jesus was clear on this. In this world, you will have trouble. Take heart, I've overcome the world. It means if you play it out, worst, worst, worst case scenario, the way your story ends as a follower of Jesus, is that no matter what, even if the earth gives way and your very life is lost, it's not. Because you will spend eternity with Christ. This is why those who started the church over 2,000 years ago were fearless, because the grave was empty. The doctrine of the resurrection, it tells us that death no longer has its sting. Our God is sovereign. He's powerful over all things, including death itself. And so even when we are tight roping, walking on a balance beam, even when we fall and get wounded, no, no, we are hooked into the sovereignty of God. We will not fear. He will rescue us. He will rescue us. And there's times that he will rescue you in the fire. Maybe you've heard it said this way. This is so helpful for me. You will feel his very presence in the fire with you. He may rescue you by pulling you from the fire. I prefer that. Right? 
or he'll rescue you by the fire. You will spend eternity with him forever. What incredible news for those of us that are in the family of God that have bent our knee to the lordship of Jesus Christ. I praise God for his sovereign rule and reign. I call to you for rescue. Verse one, I run to you for refuge. Verse two, I call to you for rescue. Here's verse three. I bow to you as ruler over all. All right, so we're really gonna zero in on the sovereignty of God right here. Verse one and verse two, you're like, I love verse one and verse two. How about verse three? You're like, mm, do I have to bow? Both knees are one knee. Have you noticed that you like being queen or king? That's what they call them in the UK, the sovereign King Charles now. But what the sovereignty of God, this, this is such an incredible truth. It's that you and I worship the one who is ruler over all. Let me give you some amazing passages from God's word about this. There's so many, but uh, 1 Timothy 6. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Keep the commandment without fault or reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who is the blessed and only sovereign. He's the only sovereign. The King of kings and Lord of lords. Have you heard this expression before, this truth? That Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Ephesians 1.18, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above, far above. Everyone say far above. Far above. Yeah, not kind of above, not sort of above, far above. Christ, King Jesus, he is far above any ruler. Yep, any authority or power or leader or anything else. I don't care who they are. President, governor, anybody. Far above. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things, not some things, nope, all things, under the authority of Christ and made him head over all things for the benefit of you. Do you know this passage? This is so good. How good is this news? He is sovereign for your benefit if you believe in him, if you're with him. I mean, all right, we got, we got one. Caleb's on board. All right. Love you, buddy. And you know about the sovereignty of God. Amazing. All right, now I'm distracted. Where are we at? Oh, Isaiah 55. Are we putting these up on the screen? Isaiah 55. I can't remember if I sent them in. All right. I'll put them on the Facebook. You can see them later. Isaiah 55. My thoughts are not your thoughts. All right, this one I could preach on for a while. I don't know, pick any of them. God, what are you doing? This is how I talk to him. Do you not hear me? Why are you delaying? God, do you not see this? God, why aren't you intervening? God, why can I pray for this person and they're healed? And we can pray for this person and they're not. I don't get it. I don't understand. And when I'm in that place, this truth right here, God's saying, John, John, hold on. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. You went to Harvard, great. Tommy went to COD. Whatever your education level might be, and it may be impressive, no matter how well you might even know the scriptures, God is saying, listen, your thoughts are like down here. He said, my thoughts. Like, do you understand the gap? And God is saying to me, I need this sermon, guys. Like when I don't know what to do and I don't understand, God is saying, listen, I'm sovereign, not you. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. I'm the one who is outside of time and space. I am the one who is ruler over all, not you. Not you. Will I bend my knee? Will I bow 
to him as ruler over all. Man, does this require faith. Man, does this require trust. But man, is it worth it. I love this quote. This is from the Alpha Course. Uh, So many of us have gone through the Alpha Course. We have a few hundred of you in Alpha right now, which is amazing. This quote's awesome. I do not seek to understand in order to believe, but I believe in order to understand. Isn't that good? I run to you for refuge. That's verse one. I call to you for rescue. That's verse two. I bow to you as ruler over all. That's verse three. Look where it leads. Verse four says this. I lead my soul to rest. This is how the song of sovereignty finishes. What a finish. Like, man, that finishes. That's money right there. I love that. Because that's what I'm looking for. That's what I want. I want rest in here. I've lived long enough to know that rest out here in this world is just not reality. I know that. But man, even when the earth gives way, even when things around me are falling apart, even when people bail, even when I have doubts, even when I don't get it, I just, if I have rest in here, you know what I'm saying? Like even when the storm is raging, but in here there's, there's calm, there's stillness. Even when, when I have rest, it changes everything. I lead my soul to rest. Psalm 46.10, here, here's how it finishes up. Be still and know that I am God. Man, what a life verse. Be still and know that I am God. A couple other translations I think are really helpful. Like be still. Like what does that what does that mean? John, am I supposed to like like sit still? Well, yeah, probably a little bit at least. Is there a certain position? Like does it matter if I'm Indian style or? I think you're overthinking it. Be still. Really interesting. Another translation. The CSB says this way: Stop your fighting. Okay, now we're, the New American Standard, I think, nails what the the Hebrew is under it. Here's the way they they translate it. Let striving cease. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want that to be my life verse. (laughs) Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Let striving cease. Why? He's sovereign. Be still and know. Be still and know. What does this look like? Here's what it looks like. It's a good thing I've been working out. (laughs) All right, so this, I'm just telling you this is my life, and it's yours. Heavy, man. Stuff's heavy. We, We just stay busy. How you doing, bro? Good, good, good. How you doing? Good, good, good. I'm doing terrible. Like, things are heavy. Things are hard, man. That's all I'm actually doing. We numb out, just work harder, stay busy. Like, what do we do? Oh, no. Be still and know that I am God. Let's strive and cease. Here it is, right here. This is it, right here. We take this off and we say, Jesus, here. Here. God, you're sovereign. I'm not. Your love is perfect. You're with me. You say, cast my cares upon you. Here's what I'm doing. I'm laying the burdens of my life at your feet. I'm going to let striving cease. Would you leave those burdens at the feet of your king, who is the king, like the king, Would you leave the weight in the very presence of the one who is sovereign over all today? Would you do that? Would you learn how to sing this song of sovereignty? And would you sing it now? And would you sing it tonight? And would you sing it on the way to work tomorrow? And would you sing it on lunch break? And would you just have this one on repeat? I want to pull the each verse up on the screen because I want you to identify as we close. Um, which verse right now do you need to sing? We're going to pull down the lights just a little bit. I want you to focus on this. We're almost done. Don't, don't get distracted. Focus here. This is your life. 
of the four verses of the Song of Sovereignty, maybe there's, there's one that stands out the most right now. It might be the refuge or the rescue or ruler or rest. I don't know which one. Let's just take a couple minutes. I want you to identify it. Which one? Maybe it's all of them. I lead my soul to rest. I love that finish. It's so powerful. Was that anyone? Just curious. Verse four, you're like, bro, it's my verse. Yeah. How about that third one? I bow to you as ruler over all. Anybody? You're like, oh man, I needed that one. Yeah. I call to you for rescue. See, I saw your hand in the back. Awesome. That's your verse. It begins, though, where we have to begin. So just like other songs, you, you can't just jump to the fourth verse. You got to start with the first verse. So this is how we're going to finish right now. I run to you for refuge. This is where you start. And you've been running. We're going to run to God, who is an ever-present help in time of trouble, in time of need. What does that look like? Well, I don't know. It could look like just you opening your hands and say, God, I'm, I'm running to you as my refuge. You could get on your knees. Our prayer team is going to be up here at the front here in just a second. They pray for you guys every week. Like, have prayer today. Have someone pray for you. Maybe you, you look at your schedule tomorrow. Instead of starting, before you're even awake, doing this, you're like, no, 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 I gotta start different. That doesn't really work. It's not a good place to start. You're gonna run tomorrow morning to your refuge. We're gonna, make, we're gonna do some of that. <laughs> Let's try that. So prayer team, if you guys would come forward, that'd be great. You guys can get in place. So appreciate you using your gifts to build up and encourage and bless the people of mission. Love our prayer team. Get prayer today. If you would, stand your feet. Let me, let me close this in prayer today. God, thank you for this song of sovereignty. God, thank you for every person that came here today, you're so good that I know there's some folks in here that are like, how did he know? He's talking right to me. No, that's God. He loves you. He sees you. He knew what you needed to hear today. That's him. Hey, that's not me. That's him. So how about you run to him? How about we make him our refuge again and again and again? God, I pray that as we take serious worshiping, saying, man, that is the way forward. That's what we do with the weight, the weightiness of life. God, may we practice singing this song of sovereignty over and over and over and over. It'll end up changing our mind and our heart and how we experience and interact with all the tough things that come our way. God, thank you for the invitation today. Thank you for every person that came here today. And Jesus, thank you for being that king who is the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords. You are ruling and reigning. You are sovereign over all things. We love you and we worship you. And all God's people agreed and said, amen. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's message. We hope that it helps you in your journey in finding and following Christ. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our messages. But as always, we would love to see you here at 82 Stratford Drive on a Sunday morning. We'll see you soon.